So last time we have studied about the introduction of patterns and sequence. So for this video, we will be studying uh, about generating patterns. However, the main focus will be finding the terms of the sequence given the end term. So I hope you will listen and understand what I am going to discuss. So before we discuss about finding the terms of the sequence given the end term, let us first define what is the general term or end term of a sequence. So the general term or the end term of a sequence is used to determine the terms of a sequence. So before we discuss the first example, I have a question. How to find the terms of a sequence if the end term is given? So dito po, given po yung formula. So ang tawag po dun sa, sa formula na yon is explicit formula. So usually, ang formula na yon ay ginagamit para i-determine or i-compute, ibigay yung mga terms na nire-require ng isang sequence. So let's have the first example. Find the first three terms of the sequence whose nth term is given by a sub n is equal to 2n plus 7. So, based sa problem na yan, kailangan natin hanapin yung first three terms ng nth term. So, paano yun? So, here is the solution. In order to find the first three terms, we have to substitute n is equal to 1, 2, and 3 to a sub n is equal to 2n plus 7. So, why do we need to substitute 1, 2, and 3, not 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or any numbers? Because po, in first three counting numbers, first three natural numbers po kasi natin is 1, 2, and 3. So, let's start with n equals 1. If n is equal to 1, then a sub 1 is equal to 2 times 1 plus 7. What is the product of 2 and 1? That is correct, 2. And then, 2 plus 7 is equal to 9. Therefore, the first term of the given nth term is 9. Next, if n is equal to 2, then a sub 2 is equal to 2 times 2 plus 7. What is 2 times 2? Correct, 4. And then, 4 plus 7 is 11. Therefore, the second term of the given n term is 11. So, last one, if n is equal to 3, then a sub 3 is equal to 2 times 3 plus 7. What is 2 times 3? Correct. That is 6. And then 6 plus 7 is 13. 13 is the third term of the given nth term. Now, for the conclusion, since nakuha na natin yung 3 terms na hinahanap ng nth term natin, therefore, the first 3 terms of a sub n is equal to 2n plus 7 are 9, 11, and 13. So, kung papansinin natin yung mga terms, yung pattern niya is nag add lang tayo ng dalawa. Okay? Next example. Find the first five terms of the sequence whose nth term is given by a sub n is equal to 4n minus 3. So, kung kanina, three terms ang hinahanap natin, ngayon naman, five terms. So, ito po ang kanyang solution. In order to find the first five terms, substitute n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, a sub n is equal to 4n minus 3. So, kanina, three terms na ang hinahanap natin. So, three lang ang sinubstitute nating number. So, ngayon po, dahil five terms, five din po ang kailangan nating isubstitute. So, let's have the first one. If n is equal to 1, then a sub 1 is equal to 4 times 1 minus 3. What is 4 times 1? 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. So the first term is 1. Next, if n is equal to 2, then a sub 2 is equal to the product of 4 and 2 minus 3. What is the product of 4 and 2? 8. And then 8 minus 3 is equal to 5. So 5 is the second term. Next, if n is equal to 3, then a sub 3 is equal to the product of 4 and 3 minus 3. So what is the product of 4 and 3? 12. 12 minus 3 is equal to 9. So the third term is 9. Second to the last term, n is equal to 4, 
then a sub 4 is equal to 4 times 4 minus 3. So, 4 times 4 is 16 minus 3. So, tapos po ang gagawin lang natin ulit is, is a subtract natin yung 3 from 16. That is 13. So, the fourth term of that given n term is 13. And the final term, n equals 5, then a sub 5 is equal to 4 times 5 minus 3. 4 times 5 is 20 minus 3 equals 17. So, that will be the fifth term of the given n term, which is a sub n is equal to 4n minus 3. So, ito na. Conclusion na tayo. So, since nahanap na natin nga yung five terms na nire-require sa atin, therefore, the first five terms of a sub n is equal to 4n minus 3 are 1, 5, 9, 13, and 17. So, as you can see, yung pattern naman niya is nag add siya ng 4. So, sana nakuha nyo yung second example natin. Let's have the third example. Find the first four terms of the sequence whose n term is given by a sub n is equal to negative 3n plus 2. So, kung mapapansin natin ngayon, ang numerical coefficient ng n is negative number or negative integer. So, same process lang po tayo. To find the first four terms, substitute n is equal to 1, 2, 3, and 4 to the given n term which is negative 3n plus 2. So, if n is equal to 1, then a sub 1 is equal to negative 3 times 1 plus 2. What is the rule in multiplying unlike signs? That is correct. Negative times positive is negative. So, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3 plus 2. What about the rule in adding unlike signs? So, dito sa addition, ang pinafollow natin dito is yung sign ng bigger value and then we proceed to subtraction. So, 3 minus 2 is 1 and then dahil bigger value natin is 3, susundan natin kung anong sign niya which is negative. So, the answer is negative 1. Next, if n is equal to 2, then a sub 2 is equal to negative 3 times 2 plus 2. Same process ulit. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 plus 2. Same process ng addition of unlike signs. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. So, ano mapapansin nyo? Yung mga nagiging sagot natin is puro sila negative. So, let's try another value of n. n equals 3, then a sub 3 is equal to negative 3 times 3 plus 2. Negative 3 times 3 is negative 9 plus 2. So, bigger value pa rin natin is negative 9. So, automatic, ang sign ng sagot natin is negative, which is negative 7. If n is equal to 4, then a sub 4 is equal to negative 3 times 4 plus 2. That is negative 12 plus 2. Again, sign of the bigger value pa rin ang iba palo natin. 12 minus 2 is 10 and then negative 10 ang final answer natin. So, for the conclusion, therefore, the first four terms of negative 3n plus 2 are negative 1, negative 4, negative 7, and negative 10. So, ano ang kanyang pattern? So, nagsusubtract lang po tayo ng negative 3. Correct. Let's have the fourth example. Find the first three terms of the sequence whose n term is given by a sub n is equal to 4 raised to n. So, dito po, yung n natin nag-act siya as exponent or power. So, ano ang tawag dun sa 4? Yun po yung base. So, what will be the solution? So, to find the first three terms, again, we have to substitute the first three numbers to the given n term. So, if n is equal to 1, then a sub 1 is equal to 4 raised to 1. Any number raised to 1, the answer is the number itself. So, the answer is 4. So, 4 is the first term. If n is equal to 2, then a sub 2 is equal to 4 squared or 4 raised to the second power. And then, 
Ang process lang po niya is, imumultiply natin yung 4 sa sarili niya. So, mind you po, hindi po siya imumultiply sa 2. So, yung pong exponent siya, siya po yung nagdidikta kung ilang beses imumultiply yung base sa sarili niya. Okay, so that is 4 times 4 is 16. Next, if n is equal to 3 and then a sub 3 is equal to 4 raised to 3 or 4 cubed. And then, 4 times 4 times 4 is equal to 64. So, again, 4 times 4 is 16. Times 4 again, the answer is 64. So, for the conclusion, therefore, the first three terms of a sub n is equal to 4 raised to n are 4, 16, and 64. So, kung mapapansin nyo yung given terms natin is nagmumultiply lang tayo ng 4 para makuha yung susunod niyang mga terms. So, itry nyo nga kung ano ang kasunod ng 64. So, let's have the fifth example. Find the first three terms of the sequence whose n term is given by a sub n is equal to the quantity of 3 fourth raised to n. So, kung mapapansin nyo dito, yung base po natin is a fraction. So, anong meron sa fraction? Of course, meron siyang numerator and denominator. So, ang mangyayari po dito, nire-raise po natin yung fraction to both numerator and denominator. So, paano yun? To find the first three terms, substitute n is equal to 1, 2, and 3 to a sub n is equal to the quantity of 3 fourth raised to n. So, kung n equals 1 natin, then a sub 1 is equal to the quantity of 3 fourth raised to 1. Again, any number raised to 1, the answer is the number itself. So, the answer is 3 fourth. What about if n is equal to 2? If n is equal to 2, then a sub 2 is equal to the quantity of 3 fourth squared. So, ang mangyayari po dito is 3 fourth times 3 fourth. So, kapag nagmumultiply po tayo ng fraction, numerator times numerator po yun. Denominator multiply to denominator. Hindi po pwedeng numerator multiply to denominator. So, 3 times 3 is 9 and then 4 times 4 is 16. So, a sub 2 is equal to 9 over 16. Next, if n is equal to 3, then a sub 3 is equal to the quantity of 3 fourth raised to 3. So, kanina, dalawang beses lang. Ngayon po, tatlong beses. That will become 3 fourth times 3 fourth times 3 fourth. So, what is 3 times 3 times 3? Correct. 27. 4 times 4, 16. Times 4 is 64. So, the final answer is 27 over 64. So, ito po yung third term natin. So, we're done na. So, for the conclusion, therefore, the first three terms of a sub n is equal to the quantity of 3 fourth raised to n are 3 over 4, 9 over 16, and 27 over 64. So, let's have the sixth example. So, dito sa sixth example natin, pagsasamahin ko na lang yung dalawa kasi meron po tayong confusion when it comes to grouping symbols. For example, Show the difference between the two terms obtained by a sub n is equal to the quantity of negative 7 raised to n and a sub n is equal to negative the quantity of 7 raised to n. So, ano mapapansin natin? So, first impression natin dyan is yung negative sign. So, sa first n term natin, yung negative, se yung negative is nasa loob siya ng parenthesis. For the second n term, Nasa, labas siya. So, so, let's have the solution. On the left side, the quantity of negative 7 raised to 1, the answer is negative 7. On the right side, 7 raised to 1 is 7. And then, may naka-attach na negative sa kanya. So, the answer is also negative 7. On the second term, the quantity of negative 7 raised to 2, the answer is positive 49. Why? Because negative times negative is positive, 
Remember your data. Huwag niyong kakalimutan ang uh, rules ng multiplication sa like sign. Next, on the right side, a sub 2. Pag 7 raised to 2, the answer is 49. Again, may naka-attach na negative before the parenthesis. So, the answer is negative 49. On the third term, the quantity of negative 7 raised to 3 is equal to negative 343. So, and then on the right side, negative times the quantity of 7 raised to 3 is equal to negative 343 also. So, anong difference ng dalawang n term na to? So, kapag po ang negative nasa loob siya ng parenthesis at nirase natin sa uh, particular exponent, ang mga sign po ng magiging product niya is alternate. So, kung mapapansin nyo, you know, naging negative 7, 49, tas negative 343 na naman siya. On the right side po, kapag ang 7 nasa loob at positive siya, and then yung negative nasa labas, so ang magiging sagot po niya, ang sign po na magiging sagot niya is puro po negative. So, yan lang po ang main difference po niya. So, I hope may natutunan kayo sa uh, pagkuha ng terms given ang formula, yung explicit formula ng sequence. So, up next, finding the end term given the terms of a sequence. So, kung kanina given yung formula, sa next video naman po, hahanapin po natin yung formula given naman yung mga terms. So, ayun, sana may natutunan kayo dito sa video. So, bago nyo panoorin to, make sure na pinanood nyo na yung pinaka una para hindi kayo nalilito. Thank you. Don't forget to share, like, subscribe. Thank you.